This week, my daughter and I build a programmable robot. Then we get to meet Ansley from Small Fry Creations. But first, it's time for a make or break. Hey guys, welcome back to Make or Break, where we share our favorite maker videos of the week and then challenge ourselves to build a project of our own. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rob, and this week we tried a little something different. Yep, a small robotics company had reached out to us and asked if we'd like to try one of their DIY robot kits. Yep, and my daughter Kaylee loved the idea, so considering so many of us are cooped up with our kids at home right now, we figured it was worth a shot. Here's how it went. Kaylee and I grabbed the box from RoboBlock and unpacked it all in the shop. The box was pretty nice. Everything came in these little green boxes and they were labeled really well. We figured it would be easiest to read the instructions on an iPad, so we downloaded the RoboBlock app and dove right in. The kit we got allowed me to choose which robot I wanted to build, so I picked one. Then it gave us really simple instructions for assembly. Now the kit was made up of some really nice parts and it was organized really well. Everything was held together with either screws or tiny bolts and nuts. It even came with a tiny screwdriver and a wrench for the bolts. The build was really easy and the instructions were good. Yep, I would just put on a couple of bolts and then swipe for more instructions. It was a lot like building a Lego kit, but with tools. After we finished assembling the robot, the app led us directly into a manual control system. Right away, I could make my robot move and turn, play sounds, and even change the little screen. But the real fun began after we brought it upstairs and opened the console where we could start programming the robot using a simple drag and drop interface. When I used the program, I could start scripts that told my robot what to do. Our first instinct was to send the robot to different people at the table, play them a song, and then move on. But that's when we ran into our first problem and when we got our first lesson in robotics. If you want to interact with the world, you need senses. That's right. So, if you want a robot to move to an exact location, you need sensors that track things like GPS, radar, imaging, etc., which of course we don't have. That was frustrating because I could write a program that told my robot to move, and every time we ran it, it would end up somewhere else. That's when we realized there was a much more complex console where we could get deeper into the programming. To take advantage of it, we built a second robot that had a couple sensors, including an ultrasonic sensor and a light sensor that allowed the robot to follow a line. We wrote a program that told our robot to move forward until it got too close to an object. At that point, he would stop, play a tune, and then turn around looking for another direction to go. The coding actually took quite a bit of time, but we didn't notice. It turned out to be really fun finding new ways to use the commands to make the robot do more and more complex things. And every time we got something new to work, it was really exciting. Of course, then we realized that on their website, there are many more sensors for things like humidity, color and light, audio. There's even an infrared unit that senses humans and pets. Fortunately, most of them are less than 15 bucks. I want all of them. Yes, she does, but we have a deal. I'm going to give her time to stick with it, and if she does, we'll order more parts. And I think that's a good deal. Okay, I'll be honest, I've been really surprised by how much Kaylee seemed to love the robot kit. Did she use it much after you guys shot? Uh, actually, yes. I had to move on to writing, and while I did that, I discovered that she had gone on to write new programs, making the robot do things I didn't even think of. That's awesome. Yep, except now I have to go and buy her all the other sensors. And that's gonna add up quick. That's not my problem. But how much are the kits anyways? Oh, so the one that she liked that had like two different sensors on it was about 80 bucks, which oh, is pretty reasonable. That's not bad. Nope. Yeah, especially considering how well built it was. Plus, my daughter is learning a new skill. She's doing a ton of critical mm -hmm. thinking, and she's already declared she's gonna grow up to be a roboticist. And that <laughs> makes Dad happy. Well, good. Okay, well, we need to move on because it's time to meet a maker. This week, we're going to meet Ansley from Small Fry Creations. Hi everyone, my name is Ainsley and I run the YouTube channel Small Fry Creations and the Instagram account Small Fry DIY. I got into making about two years ago and I completely self-taught from YouTube and that is the main reason why I wanted to create the channel, to try and give back to the community that had given and taught me so much. My hope really is to inspire others and to show you that if I can do it, anyone can do it. And I use it as stress relief and I love that feeling of accomplishment when I can look at something and know that I have made it and built it myself and I hope I can inspire that feeling in others. 
The most unsung tool in my workshop, the obvious choice has got to be the table saw because I absolutely love that guy. But really, the true answer is, I think, the Palm Router. It's super versatile, battery powered, so you can use it anywhere. And I don't know if it's because I'm using it mostly on the project that I'm working on currently, but I find this guy super useful for a variety of jobs around the workshop. And I use it on just about every project that I make, and it's actually pretty inexpensive. So to me, the answer has got to be the Palm Router. My all-time favorite project has got to be my Lego boxes and that would be for a couple of reasons. It was a super fun build the first time that I've used Perspex before in a project and also when I'm not in the workshop or at work you can pretty much find me building Lego so I really like to have it on display and when I'm watching TV at night time it just sits off to the left of the TV so I get to look at it all the time so the Lego boxes has got to be one of my all-time favorite projects. A maker that I am really enjoying following and have recently discovered has got to be Down Under Woodworks and he's a fellow Australian and he makes some incredible pieces. He has a fantastic YouTube channel showing you how he's put them all together so he has got to be my pick for the week. The project that I've got on the workbench at the moment is a set of barn doors. I'm trying to keep it as simple and DIY approachable as possible using doors found at your local hardware store and only a few tools around the workshop so really anyone can tackle the project. I'm in the painting stage of that project. I am hoping to wrap it up this week and then I can get to editing the video and get it up on the YouTube channel for all of you to see. Just want to say a big thank you to the team over at Belts and Boxes for asking me to be a part of the Meet the Maker series and I hope I can catch up with each and every one of you on my channel in the future. Thanks Ansley. If you're not following her already, do that now. I'll be sure to put the links for her channels in the description below. Now if you guys know a maker that you think we should meet, mention them in the comments below and we will be sure to check them out. For now, let's move on to our favorite maker videos of the week. Our first video comes from David at Make Something, who wants your first woodworking project to be a tasty one. David posted a woodworking build video that only requires two tools, a jigsaw and a drill. There are of course a million different things you could build with those two tools, but he chose a beer tote because Dave is awesome and so is beer. Agreed. Next, Steve Ramsey, who runs Woodworking for Mere Mortals, has been vlogging ever since the lockdown started. And now, on day 72, he taught us how to make a bandsaw box. If you've never seen this done before, Steve does a great job of walking you through each step. The bandsaw box technique makes it easy to build a box and drawer in really unusual shapes. And last of all, our friend Aaron Spain shared a new shelf video with a really unique design. These are hanging rope wall shelves. Erin points out that the build is easy, but getting these things level is more difficult. Fortunately, she walks us through how to do that too. All right, gang, that's all we've got. If you saw a maker video this week that should have been mentioned, do us a favor and link to it in the comments below. If you link it, we will watch it. That's true. I want to thank Hard for sponsoring this episode and reminding us that we can build anything we can imagine if we do it with Hard. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. All right, break's over. Let's make something.